Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Well, first of all, happy birthday to Dave Blood. Yes, Dave, Dave Blood. And also, uh, Although Keith you're from watching the Prodigy. This on a different day. Was it, would have been his birthday today, too. Who did? Keith from the Prodigy. Would have been his birthday, oh. too, which is really well, disturbing. But yeah, but happy birthday, Dave Blood. And to the other guy. Um, <clears throat> this week's question is, uh, if you if you could introduce a serial killer to someone you can't stand, who would it be? Is that how I worded it? Or basically that. <laughs> you said you were talking to your sister. Were you talking to your sister yesterday? It wasn't yesterday, but... Um, yeah, we were just like having a conversation and like we were talking about stuff and I think, you know, she said pretty much that. Um, and I found it hard to answer, but I finally chose Ed Gein. Um, I remember the mainstream guy. Um, and I'm not proud of my reasons, but I guess because he did a lot of art with the people's skin. And I th think that's horrible and disgusting, but kind of, um, interesting too and uh, he did something productive with a you know something horrible was he the, the guy who dressed like a clown no no yeah. no that's John Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. Like, how are you guys in a punk rock band you, you guys are, are you, okay first of all five, mean, yard guys? Penalty, five yard penalty on Ed Gein Ed Gein was not a serial killer uh, Ed Gein killed two old women he dug up a uh, lot of bodies. And he may body. have killed his brother. He may have killed his brother in... So just saying, okay, okay, exact words, Marsha, exact words. Well, I knew, you know, Charles Manson's out. We talked about Richard Speck was out because he just was like a mass murderer. That's the scariest book I've ever read in my life. Yep. <clears throat> and as we established earlier, the uh, um, board of directors of Union Carbine, we can't count them for killing all those people in Bofal. That, that was a mass murder. Yeah. <clears throat> And, you know, Ed Gein is like, the movie Psycho is based on him and I believe Silence of the Lambs, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it is interesting that a lot of the skulls and flesh that he used was from bodies that he dug up, like mostly freshly buried. Um, I guess he's trying to replicate his mom or something. You like to wear you like to wear flesh as clothing here here this is folks if you've just tuned in we've strayed <laughs> into an area of my expertise um i know a lot about serial killers and the best thing if you know a lot about serial killers it will keep hipsters from talking to you at parties uh, mm -hmm. all the things the hipsters hate are the things i love they hate halloween serial killers and nudity uh and if somebody starts coming up to you and starts talking about their old tiny baseball outfit you know and and how they like to play just start talking about serial killers so so i'm i i may i hate to I, I i'm going to be annoying and jump in on a lot of stuff but this is an area i know a lot about i, I actually sitting a few feet behind me is a lot of murderabilia i own a lot of serial killer things i have i had a i i got rid of it recently but i had um these true crime trading cards and it definitely did get me laid at some point like 20 some years ago that i had that box set so I'm sorry, that was a little TMI. Well, wait, why would you why would you introduce Ed Gein though to somebody you didn't like? Because Ed Gein seems well, you know, honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> this is gonna sound weird, but I can't think of anybody that I would want anything like that to happen to. So it's kind well, of Well, they're weird. already dead when Ed Gein gets to them. You know. <laughs> That's another that was another safety that I felt was like that most of the people were already dead. Not that that, you know, makes it any less disgusting, but morally, I guess it's, I don't know, who might have judged morals? Somebody once asked me if I thought if there was sex, like, after death, and I said, well, if Ed Gein gets a hold of you, yeah, sure. I can, uh, my runners up were Gary Heidnick, and I thought about Albert Fish, but I don't want, I, I definitely don't want any kids to be harmed, because I think that's all he was going <laughs> for. Unless, no, unless you, you want to take the question to the, you know, introduce you to albert fish so you can have cocktails with him somewhere and you're safe because he's gonna not go after you an adult male if you're going worse to the worst though albert fish is up there 
He shorted out the electric chair. We, we like will not stick, provide links. For those of you who don't follow this stuff, <laughs> Albert Fish liked to stick pins in his body and they electrocuted him. And that had an interesting effect on the electric chair. All three times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So I, that was my answer. Uh, okay, so my answer, um, I really am not an expert in this area at all, but uh, I did do some research. And one of the things that I found very interesting was is that the uh, Italians like to give their ser serial killers names. In other words, they usually uh, call them like the monster of Florence or the monster of Milan. Um, they even have <clears throat> one was called the hyena of San Giorgio. And one was called the soap maker of Caraggio. I don't know why they attach these. I guess the media over there likes to get. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, speaking of the monster of Florence, um, he uh, murdered at least 16 people in the hills outside of Florence between 1968 and 1965. In fact, Dan referencing. Wait, that's, that's back. Or he traveled no, back in the <laughs> Mm -hmm. 19, here's the referee over here. He was a time traveler. <laughs> I mean, like Jack the Ripper in that H.G. Wells movie. Yeah, 1985. I'm sorry. Um, and in fact, Dan, I was going to reference this. The case um, had a little bit of influence on um, the writer Thomas Harris, who wrote the Hannibal Lecter series on the third book called Hannibal. Oh, um, yeah. It's kind of referenced in that it, it, some of the things around the monster of Florence are referenced in there or used, I guess, as part of the story. Um, another Italian killer was called Cesar Servati, and he was known as the Landru of the Tiber. And I didn't really know what that was all about. He killed at least three million, or three, not three million, three women. Um, wow. Uh, Landru actually comes from a French uh, a serial killer um, named Henry, uh, Henry De Desiree Landru. Um, he was uh, charged and found guilty of 11 murders. Um, this is uh, really early in the last century. Um, sometimes he was known as the Bluebeard of uh, Gambe. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, Ronnie, you said you had some collections of things. Um, his head, he was, he was uh, sentenced and uh, executed by guillotine. And his head disappeared from the grave. And somehow... Um, it's apparently on display in the Museum of Death in Los Angeles. I don't know, Rodney, have you ever been to that museum? No, the museum, of, no, no, um, that actually, I think the, uh, um, the Museum of Death is, unfortunately, we were right across from it once. I wanted to visit. It's been shut down for a while. The one yeah, thing I do want to see, I want to see the 100-year-old dead code clown violations. In, in L.A. There's a 100-year-old dead clown I want to check out out there. He's next to a car wash. But other than that. They supposedly have his head on display there. There's a picture of it, which you'll see on the screen very shortly. Um, uh, and I was an aside, the, the Museum of Death Rodney, they apparently have a uh, fashion contest every year, um, holds a Black Dahlia lookalike competition. <laughs> um, and the, where contestants have to dress as both pre and post-mortem Dahlia. <laughs> you know, I understand that Ronald Reagan killed the Black Dahlia. Yeah, I've heard that story somewhere. I thought somebody was gonna go say what? But no, nobody did. We'll uh, provide a link. <laughs> anyway, so that's my answer. Basically, I, I, I looked into the uh, the large collection of Italian um, serial killers, which you, there's a list of them on uh, Wikipedia, which we'll provide a link to. Did they only kill other Italians? It, it, yeah, most of them, yeah, they were like, you know, within the, the country of Italy. So I'm married to an Italian. I sleep with one eye open. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Why is it the Italians get these cool nicknames like the Monster of Naples, and you know the you know, and and then Germans are always the Vampire of. It's the Vampire <laughs> of Dusseldorf, the Vampire of Berlin. You know, it's like, come on, Germans, kick kick up the imagination. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Also, you know, two, both Hillside Stranglers were Italian Americans, so it's good to see them breaking that glass ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when you change people's names at Ellis Island. All right? They're just gonna, they're just gonna murder you. <laughs> okay, is it is it me? I think it is. Okay, it is. so there's no place to escape to. This is the last big question on the left. Rise from your graves. That's when the cannibalism started. Oh shit! Hello, I'm Ben Kissel. 
here with Marcus Parks and the always entertaining Henry Zabrowski. All right, there you go, folks. We've turned into the last podcast on the left because everything eventually becomes true crime. Um, so where are we? Okay, so I decided I'm going with the worst of the worst. I'm just, I, I thought when I got the question, I thought just pick the most the most miserable son of a bitches on the planet. And I'm going to go with Leonard Lake and Charles Eng. Um, in the early 80s, in, in south of San Francisco, sort of Sacramento area, um, these guys, what they were basically convicted of was murdering three women, which doesn't sound like a lot. They murdered, they got them for seven men and two babies. And they think there may be as many as 25 people. When they dug up their land, they found 45 pounds worth of bones. These guys were just the absolute biggest. They, they, they kidnapped two families. They would kidnap the, the, the wife, the husband, and a baby, and then off the husband and use the baby to make the wife do things. And they filmed this. They filmed three women. The three women we, we definitely know they killed, they filmed it, and it is horrendous to watch. Um, these, they're the absolute scum. The reason they got caught uh, was because they broke a vice torturing, a table vice torturing a victim. And then Charles Eng, who was a, um, a kleptomaniac, he was the kleptomaniac of the pair, he tried to shoplift a vice, throw it into the back of Leonard Lake's car, and then like run off. And then they, they took a look at Leonard Lake's car, and then they were like, oh, well, yeah, you got this vice back here. So, um, oh, by the way, your license plate, this matches a car that was taken from someone who's missing. Uh, this woman had been looking for her missing brother. So this is where all the male murders came from. Leonard Lake would murder men just to assume their own identity. He did this to his own brother. He killed his own brother just so he could get like his brother's social security text masquerade out. He did it to a lot of like military personnel. He off them. Uh, he was also the, the taking of the women. He was obsessed with the book, uh, The Collector. By the way, if you ever see uh, Terrence Stamp, the King of Men is in uh, the film, The Collector. So you should definitely see that. Also read the book. He had this thing called Project Miranda after the women in The Collector, where all he planned to do was to kidnap women, keep them in a bunker and make them into sex slaves. It is scary as hell when you see the, he, he did it at least three times. The footage is very, very frightening. These guys are the absolute pond scum. Uh, for um, Charles Ang, as far as the babies go, Charles Ang had little cartoons that he drew of him like slapping the babies around and cooking them. Uh, just, I mean, these guys are, are the lowest of the low. I mean, mm -hmm. up, you know, down there with the hillside stranglers, um, you know, down there with the Moors murders. At first, I thought, go with Britain. Britain always has like, you know, uh, you know, Peter Sutcliffe. You like to say you've got the Moors murderers, you've got Dennis Nielsen. Um, you know, the British really excel in that. Hey, we'll go all the way back to Jack the Ripper. But uh, um, I thought just pick the most disgusting two and talk about them. And anybody that's watching this is into true crime. We'll, we'll go look that out. And anybody who's a hipster has left by this point because this is kryptonite to them. So yeah, they, if you, um, we'll put up links, but be careful uh, when you look at this stuff because these two are, I was talking to Vienna who was also obviously in you know, quite knowledgeable about uh, um, serial killers as well. And I'm not going to show anything from my collection because every time I talk about it, I get about a dozen death threats. But uh, um, she's very knowledgeable as well. And I think we don't, we don't sort of, uh, um, we don't think these people are cool. There's a point when you're in your 20s where it's kind of like, hee -hee. now we're just kind of horrified by it, but, you know, fascinated by the horror. My wife falls asleep to these sort of true crime things playing in the background, and I get them through osmosis. But yeah. Leonard Lake and Charles Ng. Uh, Leonard Lake is dead. He took a, uh, so he had a cyanide tablet sewn into his clothing. And he took it after they, they busted him. Uh, and uh, Leonard Lake went on the run. Eventually they caught him, the most, ex uh, Charles Ng. They caught Charles Ng, uh, the most expensive trial in California history. Uh, a real son of a bitch. He kept trying to delay it. So yeah, if you're looking for two absolute, you know, bottom of the barrel bastards, uh, Leonard Lake and Charles Ng, and, and those are my two. And I, I'll field any questions that you guys have about any serial killer. It doesn't have to be that. <clears throat> oh, see, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm Ben Kissel because I got the light here. Oh, I thought I said Ute. And away! Henry Zabrowski doing a Springfield, J Spring Hill Jack impersonation. All right, sorry. All right, and Joe's up now. It's like, I, I would introduce my nemesis to Richard 
Kuklinski. Ooh, the ice man. Also known as the Iceman. That's his nickname. Um, he murdered over 100 people by his own account. He claims maybe 200, 100 to 200. But the reason is he, I'm pretty confident he would get the job done, except that he's dead now, so. He was a hitman, yeah. But he, was a, he, was, he wasn't just a hitman. He murdered for his own purposes, too. He was a criminal. And he's, he also purportedly murdered just because he got angry with people. <laughs> and it's debatable whether somebody who's a contract killer is a serial killer, but I think that he is a serial <laughs> killer. And he had an interesting psychology because he lived a, a double life successfully until he was caught. His family knew nothing of his business. Um, and he was a very good father, according to his daughter. And, 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 and yeah, he loved his children and he loved his wife. He himself had a terrible upbringing. He was beaten by both his father and his mother. Uh, and maybe that's partly why he turned out to be the way, I don't know, the way he was. But, you know, he paid the bills, you know. Well, Kuklinski's parents would beat him with a loaf of bread inside a sack, but on his birthday, they beat him with cake. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly, his mother beat him so roughly that she broke broom handles on him. But, um, and, and for no reason except that he didn't finish his task early enough. Um, but he, he, the first murder he did, he, he did, he killed somebody because he had an argument with him. He was angry. I don't think he, he meant to kill him, but he just killed him, not with a gun or anything. He just whacked him. And then he felt sad for a couple of days. He said, and there's interviews with him. There's documentaries on HBO where they interview him. Um, uh, <laughs> but he eventually lost the sadness and felt a great power and he liked killing and that became his profession he killed for money so if you had like a few grand maybe half a million dollars he would kill somebody for it. until he got caught and he got caught i think part of the reason he got caught was he froze some of it he froze one of his victims and the act the victim was Two years later, since he was still frozen, uh, he unfortunately froze part of the evidence of the killing with it. And the fact that he was killed and he, he matched the, well, you'll see it if you watch the HBO documentaries. About that. But that's who I chose, Richard Kuklinski. In the HBO Joe, documentary, hmm? Kuklinski has this tick that he does when he would get angry at somebody and get ready to kill them. And he starts getting angry at the guy interviewing him and you can see that little tick. And it's like that, that he, he said later on, he was getting ready to kill the guy interviewing him. He also wow. he also killed a man once by taking him down to like a, a like a little cave type thing, uh, cutting him up and leaving him there for the rats to eat and setting up a, a, a TV camera, like one of those early video cameras. And he oh, had wow. a monitor set back so he could just kind of check in and watch this. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't always use guns. He used knives and cyanide and all kinds of methods. Yeah. So he was creative. He, yeah, he had a serial killer killed, buddy who drove an ice cream truck. He claims he killed, he claims he killed Jimmy Hoffa, <laughs> but FBI doesn't believe him for some reason. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Hoffa tripped in the bathtub. <laughs> yes. what, did his family, what did his family think he did? Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good question for his family, I guess. They thought he was a businessman and a really good one. Yeah, his daughter one. will say nothing bad about it. I've seen interviews of her. She she said he was the best father in the world. Yeah, I think John Wayne Gacy's uh, wife and kids said that he was like, he was normal too. Except that he was a clown. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but hey, man, I like clowns, so I'm not going to say anything negative that's, about that's that. That's Ben Kissel's line, the guy I'm impersonating. He says, nobody ever talks about... What a great clown John Wayne Gacy was. You never see him like, <laughs> and, there's a documentary, you, know, you never see some kid go, best birthday party I ever had. He made balloon out of yeah, it. He's actually a pretty decent painter, too, if you've ever seen any of his painter paintings. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Joe, I would say that that he falls into, that guy falls into serial killer category because, like, 
yeah one of the definitions is that it's like a theme you know some kind of thing and like a contract killer you know he gets into his own that's that that theme yeah i think kluklinski enjoyed it too much to be considered just a regular contract killer this yeah, is he, he also did his own jobs too <laughs> for his own <laughs> for his own like he would uh double dipping he would lure people you know i have a whole van i have all these uh blank video tapes and for a really low amount of money, you can come get them and then kill them. There's no videotapes, but here, I'll take your money and you're dead. That's why pirating video is wrong. <laughs> okay, take that FBI warning seriously, people. Or okay? or, drug, or, or pharmaceuticals, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. The, they, those are the thing, you know, that's the sort of thing he did. Well, the important thing is he enjoyed what he did. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't work for him. It wasn't a daily grind. He would never get up and go like, oh, I hate Mondays. No, no, he loved his job and he excelled at it. His red collar job. (laughs) His red collar job. That should be a new, that's a good term, Dan. I like that. You you know, what are you, a white collar, blue collar, red collar worker. I I make people go. Well, I I used to joke when I was like cleaning bathrooms, I was a yellow collar worker. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Those days are grew. Andy, did you want to chime in on this? What do you think? I By think the way, I, you don't have to say who it is Andy you looks want. Horrifying. To I think I came in on the wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> How is this the wrong episode? How are people in rock and roll bands and don't know a lot about serial killers? I don't well, get this. I, well, I, I, does, does Richard Nixon count? I was thinking about that. <laughs> he did kill that bus boy. He, I mean, he basically, they were, they were going to go to the, the peace table and he sabotaged it so yes. he could win the election. Yes, he did. And that killed a lot of, wound up killing a lot of people. But again, it's like why we can't count Charles Manson, because Charles Manson ran like a criminal racket. If you're running a criminal racket and you're just doing this stuff to say that, I don't know if that's serial killer. You know, now he may have, he may have enjoyed, for all we know, Nixon enjoyed you know, shooting sex workers, you know, in, in part of D.C. We don't, we can't he, say anything. He did. He, he, did. he was a pretty good pianist. Yeah. <laughs> and he was a two-drink drunk. If you got a, two drinks in him, Nixon got, got messed up. It's phlebitis. Yeah. We got on Newcomb, Henry. Should we uh, move on Let to recommendations? Go on to recommendations. This is before this gets any darker. <laughs> um... <clears throat> I I would like to do a somewhat shameless self promotion, but also relevant to Dave Ludd's birthday, because a couple of years ago I recorded a. I woke up early in the morning and I just immediately started recording um, into the voice recorder on my phone like a dream I just had, and um, and then I put like a little bit of music under it, but um, it's about like hanging out with Dave Ludd. Uh, in my dream, and we'll put a link up. Yeah, that's good. I remember that. Um, I'm going to recommend my friend Sonia Harris's Etsy um, website. She is a graphic designer artist, and um, if you go to swearingpattern.com, it'll take you to her storefront. She makes um, these really great designs. Um, with curse words in them. Uh, it's kind of therapy for her. And uh, she's had a lot of health issues over the last years and this has gotten her through a lot of uh, pain and, and so forth. You can see some really cool mugs and mandalas, um, <coughs> even throw pillows and clothes and t-shirts and even like van style slip on shoes. Um, in fact, I think maybe I got one of you, one of her mugs once. Yeah, Dan, I think you have one of yeah. her mugs. And I got to say, it was probably a good couple months before I saw the secret word in it. But yeah. <laughs> I, that was that was, a, that was a few years ago, and I use that mug almost every day. Mm-hmm. And I never yeah. told you this, Dean, but one time I was washing it, like a week after you gave it to me, and it chipped on the uh. thing. And it's been like that the entire time, and I use it literally five times a week. <laughs> um, great. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to steal your thunder in the recommendation. So. No, 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 that's all right. It's great. Um, she's having a problem. She had a problem recently on Instagram. Um, some trolls decided to keep reporting her site for using the word swearing pattern for some reason. And she's gotten into 
trouble with the Instagram uh, people, but apparently it's being straightened out. But anyway, it's really affected her sales at her site, and this is what's keeping her afloat since she's had all this, um, you know, health issues and so forth. It's how she makes her living. So if anybody wants to go over and get a, uh, a coffee mug that says tits on it, go ahead and do it. All right, bye. Half the dead milk, man. Love yeah. it. Yeah, this is why, and, and yeah, take my money. I've seen this stuff. It's fantastic. This is why we need a Richard Kuklinski to hunt down the people who reported her. You know what I mean? <laughs> where, where, where are these people? Um, okay, so uh, normally I do two recommendations, one for your ears, one for your eyes. Um, this week I'm actually going to recommend, <coughs> excuse me, two movies. So I'm not even going to mention the new Zanias album, Unearthed which is freaking incredible. We're, we're, we're probably not even going to put up the cover of the new Zanias album, Unearthed, which is really incredible. I'm going to stick with two movies. The first movie is called, it's from 2017. <coughs> Excuse me, it's another one of these weeks where I'm choking on something. Mm. This is an excuse to drink beer. Uh, the first movie is called, uh, for 2017, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Um, if you watch the show, you know that anything that has to do with Blue Ruin, or with Green Room. We respect that the way we respect the movie The Warriors. Those films are great. Uh, the guy who wrote and directed this appears. He stars in uh, Blue Ruin and he appears in uh, Green Room. And this movie is incredible. Imagine Death Wish, but nobody, well, imagine if Death Wish was on a smaller scale. Somebody who just gets tired of getting ripped off. And, and that's what this is. There's a woman who gets tired of just people being mean to her, being jerks. Finally, somebody breaks into her house and they take her laptop and some silverware, and she kind of snaps, and she snaps in the coolest possible way. Um, see this movie? It's, it's generated two great lines, which I use all the time, which is one is, I threw it that hard, and the other one is, that's not your lawn tag, tiger. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. The second movie is uh, from 2020, and it's called Freaky, and it was originally called Freaky Friday the 13th. Folks, if you haven't got a good teen body swap comedy lately, if you haven't seen one of those, oh, it's your chance again. Um, there used to be things like Freaky Friday at 18 again, where teenagers would swap bodies. Uh, in this, a young teenage girl swaps bodies with a serial killer. And the serial killer is played by Vince Vaughn. And part of the joy of this movie is watching Vince Vaughn act like a teenage girl. He's like running like this. And yeah, so, and the teenage girl, of course, is now a serial killer. And I thought that was going to be the best part. But no, the best part is Vince Vaughn inhabited by a teenage girl. So <clears throat> I'm going to cough my way out. And uh, those are my recommendations. I would like to recommend a Netflix movie. It's a documentary called Bob Ross Happy Accidents betrayal and greed it's about the painter bob ross it's very it's a heartwarming story in a way but there's also a dark underbelly to the tale that's where the betrayal and greed come in and uh that's all i'll say about it it's on that does he team up with richard kluklinski to get some revenge <laughs> gonna paint some happy clouds yeah. over top of nice the decaying clip. bodies <laughs> Yeah. I think Ed Gein had a little more of an angle on that. You know, that, that could have been a whole separate episode. Who was the most <laughs> artistic serial killer? Because I'll go with Nielsen. Because when Nielsen cut that one guy's head off, the guy did have cut on the dotted line. And I learned that fact from Joe. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Mm. It's real. It's finally here. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Good night, Frosty. Everybody. Good night.